Hi, welcome to another video development tip. Today we're looking at another Entity Framework Core example in an ASP.NET Core 2.2 app. So what we're looking at today is using an in-memory database instead of a SQL Server database or other provider in your unit test. Because So this example really shows or shines when you don't care about the provider as much, but just making sure your, your logic inside your app is correct. So just to show what our current app looks like, in the startup, we have a DB context, and we're just using SQL Server as a provider. We are configuring warnings here, which if you're more curious about this, there is a video on this. And we are adding create customer service to our container. And then over in our entities, which is our table, we have just customer that has an ID, a string name, order total, and a status, which is enum. We've got a context, that's our only table, and we're also doing some configurations, which if you were wondering about this right here, this is to help clean up your configurations. It was in an earlier video, link will be in the description. And inside that configuration, we're just using an enum conversion for our status, so we're storing it as a string in the database. That was also an earlier video. And then we have one customer controller, or just one controller, and I put it all in one file just for ease of use in reading so let me increase font so in this controller what we're doing is we have one HTTP method of post and we're just creating customer and we're just taking that create customer and sending it straight to our service inside our service we are directly injecting our context and then inside create customer we just create a new customer if the order total is greater than or equal to a thousand, then we'll set them to premium. Otherwise, it'll just be a standard customer. And then we're saving that off and returning the ID to the customer we created. And to create a customer, all we do is we ask for a name and order total. We always figure out if they're premium or standard on the server side. So given the information, we have two unit tests in here. We have we are using in unit for this, if you're curious. We have a setup method where we are saying use SQL Server for our provider. And then we are creating our context, making sure database is created. And then we are creating our service. And then on teardown, we are deleting database each time just to make sure that each unit, each test can run as a single unit by itself and not be dependent on their test or be affected by their test. So we have two unit tests, one where the amount's over 1,000 and the customer should be marked as premium, one where the customer, where the amount is under a thousand and should be marked as standard. So this is great, right? We have our tests to, to verify the if logic, but for every single test, we are going to create this SQL server and then we're going to destroy it. And it's just, it's just not what you want to do every time for unit tests. We don't really care about what the provider is in a sense. We only care about what we are, the application logic we're testing. So we can do instead of using SQL Server is we can add a NuGet package to our test project. And I added only to the test project Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.InMemory. What that's allowing us to do is it is allows us to replace this provider SQL Server and instead dot use in memory database. All we need for in memory database is just the database name. So We'll just call it test db. So after that, all our tests should still run, and you will see that we never actually create a database for this. So let me go to the unit test runner. And we'll run. And they should become successful here in a second. And yeah, so Right there, we were able to test our project without actually creating a database and not mocking our context or anything. There are some downsides to the in-memory database, and we'll pull up the docs just to show that. So here we have the testing with in-memory. So one of the problems with it, or not problems, but drawbacks if it, if it matters for you, is it's not a relational database right here. They even have it in bold right here. It's a title. They don't they don't really mimic a relational database. They don't have the referential integrity that a SQL server would have. So if that matters for your testing, then obviously 
don't use this. But if you're just testing your application logic, this is a great alternative to having to spin up a SQL Server every single time. Uh, I'll have a link to the code in the GitHub in the description. Uh, please leave any feedback, comments, like, let me know. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at, at alwill.net.